what is up everybody welcome back to the channel Rivas talk sports i am back again with my divisional win loss prediction series in today's video i will be talking about the nfc south so let's hop into the video so the first team that we'll be talking about is the carolina panthers and they are coming into 2024 with an over under of five and a half now if you look at the schedule i do have them being underdogs in majority of the games for those who are new to the channel i do color code each week red is me predicting that they'll be underdogs red is that i'll predict them being favored um the panthers were 2 and 15 last year the team was very subpar had they not given that pick to the chicago bears the panthers would have had that number one draft pick but Coming in 2024, um, it's very up in the air of how the Panthers are going to look. Will they regress even more or will they get better? Um, but just based on the schedule that I see um, compared to the teams and the talent that they have, compared to the Panthers who are a very young, young team, um, I do think that they will be underdogs in the majority of the games. That does not mean that I think they'll lose all of the games that they're underdogs. The Panthers did a great job in the offseason. They did boost up the, they did boost up the offensive line. Um the Panthers did give up the second most sacks in the NFL tied with the Commanders, so by them taking care of the offensive line, it will help Bryce Young have more time to make plays. Um they did have a very very phenomenal draft class of pretty much just high upside players. Um they got Xavier Leggett top five wide receiver in the draft they got the number one running back in jonathan brooks they got jatavian sanders so so on and so forth so they had a really really quality draft class they do have a new head coach in dan canals who was with the seahawks in 2022 played a big role in geno smith having a good year in which he got the extension he was the offensive coordinator for the Tampa bay buccaneers Played a big role in Baker Mayfield in that offense. Baker got that contract. So I think he'll play a big role in Bryce Young's development. So I think the offense will be great, especially um, with them trading for Deontay Johnson. So they have a nice wide receiver room with Deontay Johnson, Adam Thielen, and Xavier Leggett. I'm sure Mingo will get in there. Um, not, I know I said that the offense will be great. I think the offense will be new and improved i think they'll be better than they were last year now let's talk about the defense even though that they did give up the most rushing touchdowns they had a really solid pass defense evro is probably one of the top defensive coordinators in the nfl um but it is a passing league and if you could stop the pass it would definitely keep you in the game throughout the season so my bull prediction or my win loss predictions for the Carolina Panthers is I have them going six and 11, going over that five and a half. Compared to two and 15 last year, I think they'll win an additional four wins. Um, they do have the third easiest schedule in the NFL, so they can probably squeak out an extra two. I think the ceiling for this team can be eight and nine. That's like everything going well for this team, ceiling eight and nine, especially off the schedule that they have. Um, but at worst, maybe four wins. But I think six and eleven is a nice fair point for the Carolina Panthers. I think they could take down the Chargers, sneak in and get the Bears, the Commanders, the Broncos, the Giants. Um, their schedule does get really hard after the bye week. Um, but I do think they could sneak in a win there. But if you're a Panthers fan, yes, even though six and eleven. You're still under 500. You just got to be happy that you're not in that 215 um, brack, uh, win loss bracket like you were last year. I think the Panthers are probably going to be one of the most new and most improved teams going to the um, 2024 season. Um, for win improvement, I think that's a win for the organization as a whole. They do have solid young players. And I think if you are a Panthers fan, give yourself some time because I personally believe that in a couple years, you guys can compete for that top spot in the NFC South in a few years. Give it some time, trust the process, but I think that the Panthers, this is where it starts to roll and get better from here. Now, the next team that I'll talk about is the New Orleans Saints. I know I spelled their name wrong. Um, let the elephant out in the room on that. Um, but with the New Orleans Saints, with the over-under, it is seven and a half. 
Um, I think it is a split between underdogs and then being favored. I just have a hard read on this team. Um, the offensive line was quite atrocious. Um, Derek Carr did get hit a bit, um, in which it kind of made the offense quite stagnant to push the ball on a consistent basis. Can we see Alvin Kamara become Alvin Kamara a few years back? Is you know Chris Olave still there? Is he going to have a quality running mate on the opposite end? Um, and let's talk about the defense, right? I mean, the defense is starting to become a bit aging. Um, Cam Jordan, mid thirties. Demario Davis, linebacker, mid thirties. Tyron Matthew, in his thirties. So the defense is starting to age a bit. You know, can they last a full season without getting hurt? The NFL is constantly bringing just new and younger players into the season, and can they keep up, right? And me, personally, I am not a big fan of Dennis Allen. I just feel like when there's games where the Saints can win, they just somehow find a way to lose. And I just think that um, Dennis Allen, who knows what could happen, but I think that if the Saints don't at, make the playoffs at some point, this may be Dennis Allen's, Dennis Allen's um, last year. Um, but we'll see how the season goes. Um, I know Derek Carr is coming in as the start of the as a, you know, obviously starting quarterback, but if things do not look bright for the season and things are looking very murky throughout the season, don't be surprised if you see Spencer Rattler coming and take over the job and, you know, stave Derek Carr from further injury, if that were the case, but um, don't be surprised if you see Spencer Rattler. I believe that he is a quarterback of the future, but you know, with my win-loss projection, with my win-loss prediction for the New Orleans Saints and based on what I'm seeing, kind of get a hard read on this team. I think they'll hit over that seven and a half. Um, I think they'll go eight and nine. I you know, do think that they can sweep the Carolina Panthers. I think they'll split with the Falcons and the Buccaneers. Um, they pretty much have a very tough schedule. You know, the Cowboys, Eagles, Chiefs, um, the Browns' tough defense. I think, you know, the Rams, if Stafford's healthy, gunslinging and then towards the bottom of the season but yeah i just think that you know the saints at most ceiling wise could probably get nine wins 10 depending how things go at worst maybe seven but i think they'll float around the 500 range whether it's below 500 at or above 500 um but yeah just my bold prediction for the new orleans saints is based on you know uncertainty of how is the offensive line going to be how's their cars play going to be how's Kamara going to look coming into this 2024 season and what they're going to do how's the aging group of the defense going to be and you know is dennis allen going to change this team and be better um but hard read on this team but i just think that the new orleans scene new orleans saints i just think that the prediction for me will be eight and nine now the next team that i'll talk about is the atlanta falcons the best acquisition that they've had in the offseason is getting Kirk Cousins. They had to deal with Marcus Mariota. They had to deal with Desmond Ritter. Um, they finally got Kirk Cousins, who is a top 10 quarterback in the league when healthy. Unfortunately, he did tear his Achilles, and he is getting up there in age. So hopefully we can see him, you know, play a full season very healthy. Um, but I do think that the Falcons can have a top 10 offense, especially with Kirk Cousins slinging the ball. I think that Drake London could finally get 1,000 receiving yards. And I think Kyle Pitts can finally, not finally, but I think he get back to getting 1,000 receiving yards. I think this could be a season where B. John Robinson can explode um, in this offense, whether it's a receiving and a running back, just be a nice, you know, dual threat for the offense. Um, but the, the ball is going to fly at the dome. Um, this offense is definitely going to spark. On the defensive side, this team did rank last in, you know, pass rush percentage. So in a passing league, you got to have to get the quarterback, especially, you know, you have to you know, bring the heat to make plays for your secondary and create turnover opportunities. And you also kind of have to get to the quarterback to push the opposing offenses back a few yards to put them in troubling positions and situations to make them punt. Um, but I just feel like this is one of those situations where, yes, the Atlanta Falcons did elevate their quarterback room, which was a main priority. Um, but I just feel like this is a season where the defense may let them down in key games by not getting after the quarterback or just kind of just um, just not getting after the quarterback. And I just think that 
that may hurt the Falcons' chance of winning the NFC South. I know a lot of people are giving the NFC South divisional winners to the Atlanta Falcons, but it's going to come down to how is that defense going to play. Yes, they have the offense. I, I, I give you that. The Falcons have the offense finally with a quarterback, but how is the defense going to look? I'm sure a lot of you who watched the NFL draft were expecting an edge at pick number eight. Did they get Michael Penix? I'm sure he is the quarterback of the future, but I think the Falcons could have done more to take care of that as position and get after the quarterback. So I just think that that will be their Achilles heel. How is Kirk going to stay healthy? Can he play a full season? And is this uh, pass rush going to get any better? So with that being said, I'm going to stop talking on that. But with that being said, I do think that the Falcons are going to go under nine and a half, and I think they'll go nine and eight. The ceiling, 10 and seven, 11 and six, take the NFC South. My floor for them, I do not think they go under 500. I do not think they'll get worse with Kirk at quarterback. So I think nine and eight is like the minimum side of things. Um, But I just have them at nine and eight because I just think that there are just key games where the Defense isn't going to give enough pressure to opposing quarterbacks and may get picked up apart and lose key games in which they should have won. I mean, you got to get after a quarterback for the Eagles. How is that going to look with Jalen Hurts and that new offensive coordinator? Got to get after Patrick Mahomes. You got to get after Geno Smith, Dak Prescott. Um, you're going to have to get over, you know, I think they can get wins over the Raiders and they probably can get wins over the Commanders. So that could be two extra wins for there. But I just think that this pass rush defense may hurt them during the season, even though they do have that quarterback under center. Now, last but not least, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I do have them quite a split of being underdogs and favored. They had that over under seven and a half, which is to me a bit surprising for the three straight time divisional winners. Um, if you see for the first half of the season, things do get a bit rough. But if you look at the bye week, they can pretty much win out and pretty much take over that NFC South division. Um, But the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they do have a new offensive coordinator. Their prior offensive coordinator is now the head coach of the Carolina Panthers. But with the offensive coordinator that they have now, um, he was with the um, Los Angeles Rams. And Baker was with them during that brief stint. So there is some familiarity with the scheme. They did bring back Mike Evans. They had a quality draft class. They got the number one center. So the center position definitely improved. They got a nice running back to add depth to um, that running back room. They have Bucky Irving, who reminds me a lot like Aaron Jones. I know there's a thing called, you know, smash and dash, but this is like a dash dash duo. They both can hurt you. Um, White and Irving can hurt you on the ground and they can hurt you in the passing game. So that'll definitely help them out in third down and second down situations. Um, and on the defensive side, right? Vita Vey is there, that defensive line could definitely do their part. The linebacker room is definitely solid. There is a lack of depth, but the defense of the linebacker room is solid. KJ Britt, David's there. Um, the edges pr- are pretty good. They did sign um, Jordan Whitehead. They do have Tyke Smith, who is a very versatile cornerback and safety. So the secondary is solid. Todd Bowles, I do believe that he can definitely – regroup this team again and try to strive to get that fourth straight divisional title um but with that being said um just based off the the um the team as a whole and their schedule i do have the tampa bay buccaneers winning the their division in four straight years i don't think that the defense will let them down in certain games like i do think that the falcons would um the first week the first um half of the season Very tough. They got the Lions, the Eagles, the Ravens, the Chiefs, the Niners. It's going to be a very hard first half. But like I said earlier on, after the bye week, things do get a lot easier. They'll start to get a couple winning streaks and get hot and get the momentum going. And yeah, if you see in week 16 at Dallas, I think this is a game where Cowboys are going to overlook the Buccaneers. And with the Buccaneers getting hot after four straight wins, I think they can upset the Cowboys there. So I do think they could sneak in an upset there after the bye. And who knows what could happen at week 18. But I think after the bye, the Buccaneers can win out. Um, 
ceiling for the Buccaneers, 11, 12. Um, my floor is maybe eight and nine, but I do think that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers can get double digit wins. I do think that they can get hot after the bye, right when the Falcons are kind to, you know, slow down a little bit. And yeah, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, to me, I think they could win the division in four straight years. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have, um, if you enjoy the content, please give the video a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel as I do make weekly football content and comment below on your thoughts and what you think the win loss will be for the NFC South and who you think will be divisional winners in the NFC South. Thank you so much and catch you next time.